There's a lot of bro science floating around the martial arts world, and the most egregious example of this is the idea of bone conditioning. This statement applies to knuckle conditioning, elbow conditioning, rib conditioning, and whatever other stupid kind of bone conditioning the kids are doing nowadays. But this video will primarily focus on shin conditioning because of its pervasiveness throughout the combat sports world. I'm aware that I'm going to ruffle some feathers with this one, but the truth hurts and when have I ever strayed away from controversy? I'm going to give a brief overview of how the process of bone remodeling really works, what shin conditioning does to your bones, and how to actually make your shins stronger. Now let's look at the process of bone remodeling and keep in mind that this is a very brief overview. Your bone contains cells called osteoclasts and osteoblasts. The osteoclasts eat away old bone tissue and the osteoblasts deposit new bone tissue. Cells called osteoclasts have the role of breaking down our bone. Cells called osteoblasts have the job of making new bone. Every day there's a constant ongoing cycle of minerals being eaten by the osteoclasts and recycled by the osteoblasts into new healthy bone tissue. Bones get stronger when osteoblasts get more work done and they get weaker when osteoblasts slack off. This process is governed by Wolf's Law, which states that bones adapt to the stresses that they're placed under. Mechanically, exerting force on a bone is known as stress. If I was carrying around a bunch of weights, my legs would be compressed under the force of additional mass. Once this stress is applied, bone growth is triggered by the piezoelectric effect. This means the compression actually creates teeny tiny electrical currents inside my bones, and these electrical currents tell my osteoblasts to start working overtime. When this happens, the osteoblasts end up adding more bone than the osteoclasts are taking away, which makes my bones thicker and stronger. Now, I need to dispel some myths about how people think bones get stronger. The key is to understand the difference between stress and strain. Stress is the amount of force placed on your bones. Strain is how much your bones flex, bend, and buckle under that stress. Stress helps bones adapt, but strain usually just damages them. Now, I'm sure many of you are thinking, but doesn't damaging your bones make them stronger? Actually, no. Many people grew up hearing that broken bones heal stronger, but turns out you were just lied to your whole life. There is no evidence that bones are harder to break after they've fully healed from a fracture. In fact, they might even be weaker. The myth comes from the fact that a broken bone, while healing, will form a thick callus, which can be slightly stronger, but that callus quickly goes away. In fact, damaging your bones can often make them heal weaker. The common understanding of shin conditioning involves creating microfractures, which cause bones to heal thicker and stronger, much in the same way that muscles work. Create microfractures in your bone. And it creates microfractures. These little tiny microfractures, right? These kicks create microfractures. Bone is just like the rest of your body, like your muscles. You break them down, you let them heal back up, the stronger they'll get. But bones aren't muscles, and microfractures don't make them heal stronger. In fact, giving yourself microfractures make your bones weaker. When your bones are damaged, osteoblasts are called in to repair the damage. But this means that your osteoblasts have to fix the microfractures while replacing all the minerals that your osteoclasts are destroying, and they often can't manage to do both. This means that healing your microfractures can actually cause a drop in bone density, as your osteoblasts are forced to pull double shifts to keep up with your osteoclasts. Eventually, the microfractures will heal and your osteoblasts can start to catch up on their work. But if you're constantly re-injuring your bones in a reckless attempt to strengthen them, your osteoblasts will never get the chance to catch up. And even if your osteoblasts do manage to keep up, a bone constantly in the process of damage and repair is weaker than a bone in homeostasis. Think of your bones like a brick wall. If you keep breaking the wall and repairing it over and over, you're going to end up with a disorganized mess of masonry. It would be stronger if you had just left it alone. But let's assume that you're not using enough impact force to strain or damage your bones. You're using just enough to give your bones a reasonable amount of stress. How would your tibia theoretically remodel itself? Any force applied to the front of your shin is going to impart shear and bending stress to your bone. How shear stress affects the remodeling process is not well understood, so let's just examine the results of bending stress. When a bone is bent, the side of the bone on which the force is applied gets pushed together and experiences compression. But the other side of the bone is actually stretched out and put in a state of tension. 
Now, the research indicates that bones under compression get thicker and bones under tension get thinner. This means that bone will be added to the front of your tibia and removed from the back of your tibia. Remember, Wolf's Law doesn't say that bones always get stronger, it says that bones adapt. So congratulations, you now have a curvy tibia. Hashtag all bodies are beautiful, except for you and your stupid wavy bones. After this kind of conditioning, your bone is essentially an arch, which could make it stronger when impacted from the front. This is because lateral impact would be translated into compressive force, and bones are typically much stronger under compression. However, this creates two other issues. First of all, any compressive force would be translated into an outwards bending force. This means a sudden directional change or sufficiently hard landing is now more likely to break your shin. Your bone may be better at kicking, but it's worse at virtually everything else. Second of all, your bone is not going to stay this way, even if you want it to. Remember how I said compressive forces will turn into bending forces? Well, if you happen to do anything crazy like walk or stand, your own mass is going to exert a bending stress on your bone that puts the inside curve in compression and the outside curve in tension. This means that just standing up and walking around will cause your tibia to remodel itself right back to where it was. Unless you spend more time shin conditioning than you do standing up, you're unlikely to remodel your tibia in any meaningful way. But remember, you could still end up damaging it. Shin conditioning has almost no way to make your bones stronger, but it could make your bones weaker. One of the main reasons that people think shin conditioning make your bones tougher is because once you're conditioned, throwing kicks hurts less. But this likely has little to do with bone strength and much more to do with the fact that repeated impact will deaden nerves. I'm sure you've seen insane martial artists that have conditioned themselves to take a ballistic missile to the groin without flinching. But do you think they made their scrotum any stronger? No, they just deadened all the nerves so they don't feel the pain. But not feeling pain does not mean there's no damage. In fact, it could make the damage worse. Our bodies feel pain for a reason. It's to warn us when damage is happening. So you're deadening the nerves but not strengthening the bone overall. And if you're mm. not doing that, you're going to think your bone's a lot stronger than it is, but it can't handle the impact. If I throw a kick that puts a crack in my shin and I don't feel it, I'm going to end up throwing more kicks. And then my leg is going to snap in half. They said that's what happened with Anderson. Uh -huh. That Anderson threw a kick, yeah. like he felt something was wrong, and then when he threw that second kick and it snapped in half, mm -hmm. that's, that's why it did that. The thing that's causing leg injuries is not a lack of shin conditioning. It's believing that shin conditioning makes you impervious to damage. You want to condition your shins to be able to throw these bad boys. The reckless abandon it, y'all. This is the kind of thinking that leads to broken shins. His tibia is probably not any stronger than mine is. In fact, because he's more than a decade older than me, it's quite possibly weaker. Now, I'm not going to say that you should never do shin conditioning, mainly because hitting your shins is super painful and being able to dull and suppress that pain could give you an advantage in a fight. But you need to be aware of how hard you're kicking and how much damage you're doing to your bones. Because thinking you're invincible can result in a long road to recovery. Now, all of this begs the question, if shin conditioning doesn't work, how do I actually make my shins stronger? Good news, there is a way. Sometimes. We know that longitudinal compressive forces make your bones thicker and stronger. The best way to create these forces is with exercise. The higher the compressive forces we create, the better, within reason. If you jump off of a building, that's too much force. This means that the key to building bone strength is weight training. There's even some evidence that impacts such as sprinting or jumping can have an even more significant effect. Apparently an impact compressive load can somehow trigger your bones to get ready to remodel themselves. However, not all exercises are useful. Low impact, high repetition loading such as long distance running does very little to strengthen your bones. In fact, marathon runners often have lower bone density than people that don't exercise at all. Instead, you want to prioritize high impact, low repetition exercises like weightlifting or power sports. Many common sports will give you adequate bone stress in the parts of the body that they use. For example, tennis players show significantly more bone mass in their playing arm than their non-playing arm, showing that powerful racket swings are a very good way to develop bone mass. Now, you might be trying to figure out how swinging a tennis racket puts your arm in a compressive longitudinal load, but it's actually your muscle 
contractions themselves that are pulling on your bones and creating the necessary forces. When I do a bicep curl, the weight in my hand would theoretically put my humerus in tension, but the contraction of my bicep actually pulls my ulna and radius into my humerus, creating the necessary compressive force. This is why weight training has the two-pronged benefit of both loading your bones and making your muscles strong enough to load your bones even more in the future. So if you want stronger bones, quit smacking yourself with things and actually go to the gym. And if you specifically want stronger shins, quit skipping leg day. Weight training combined with the rigors of combat sports should give you pretty healthy bones. In fact, this is part of the reason that people think shin conditioning works. When people start taking arts like MMA or Muay Thai, they start shin conditioning and then their shins get stronger. But it's not because they started shin conditioning, it's because they started exercising more by doing the martial art. Now, here's the bad news. All of the ways I just gave you to build bone apply to people in their late 20s or younger. If you're over the age of 30 and want to build stronger bones, you missed your chance. We spend the first three decades of our life building bone mass and then it starts to decline. Unless you're an astronaut coming back from a lengthy stay in microgravity or one of the other very rare exceptions, there is no way to rebuild bone after the age of 30. However, exercise is very important in slowing down your decline. With sufficient exercise, you can make your bone strength more or less plateau for a good long time. But unfortunately, you won't be able to make them stronger. And this is actually part of the way we can tell that the reduction in pain associated with shin conditioning does not correlate to stronger bones. If you start shin conditioning after the age of 30, you will experience less pain when you kick. But we know your bones fundamentally aren't getting stronger. We can actually see the correct principles in action when we examine the small group of UFC fighters that have managed to fracture their shin mid-fight. Most of the breaks we see are from fighters well into their 30s, when their bone mass has been declining for nearly a decade. The only UFC fighter in his 20s that managed to break his shin throwing a kick is Corey Hill, who looks like he skipped leg day. Coincidence? I think not! I understand that this is a very complex topic, and I am not a subject matter expert. I encourage you to fact check me with credible sources. And if you are a subject matter expert, please comment below with any corrections, clarifications, or additional information because this was really hard to research. I'm especially interested in how bones are likely to remodel under transverse shear stress because I couldn't find squat on that. But to sum it all up, shin conditioning is fake bro science and the best way to make your shin stronger is exercise. Just quit skipping leg day. But remember to take everything in this video with a grain of salt. Bone remodeling is a complex process. There's a lot that scientists don't understand, and I understand even less. And I purposely left out a lot of detail on how bones work because I didn't want the video to be too confusing. There are, admittedly, a lot of other points I could have addressed and a lot of things that I could have explored in further depth. But my target audience is people that punch each other in the head, so I didn't want this to turn into a biology class. Also note that none of the studies I could find were looking at shin conditioning specifically because the overlap between professional fighters and bone scientists is, believe it or not, really small. It's entirely possible that I end up being incorrect on a point or two, and I encourage anyone with subject matter expertise to issue corrections. I'm a martial artist, not a bone scientist. But according to my current level of understanding, all shin conditioning does is deaden enough nerves to prevent you from feeling the damage that you're doing to your body. I bet a bunch of you thought I worshipped the altar of combat sports and thought MMA was perfect. Wrong! I've got criticism for everyone.